Hi friends, I'm Anna Hellman and I have a question for you. Have you made a shaker card before? Now I know a lot of you who watch along with my videos are new to card making and I do not at all expect that you have made a shaker card before. But those of you who are a little more experienced, I know lots of you have made shaker cards. In this video, I'm going to cover real quickly how to make a basic shaker card, but I wanna look at some more creative ways to create shaker cards as well. What is a shaker card? It's a card that has fun little sequins or shakers of some sort that move around when you move the card. It makes it really fun for the person who you give it to when they open it. So let's look at some fun ways to create shaker cards. Here are two different shaker cards I have created recently. This one I created for a basic tutorial just to explain the basics of how to make a shaker card. And then this one I created with my paper pumpkin kit, my monthly kit that comes in the mail that I really love. And I, I change up my projects every month. I send out ideas to those who subscribe through me, uh, send out some other ideas for how to use the kit. And this was one, I took that leaf overlay piece I put the window sheet, the clear piece behind it and added some shakers in the background. So we are going to look, like I said, at the way to create a basic shaker card, but then I wanna share several other ways to spice them up a little bit, make them a little bit different. On these projects, I'll show you quickly, I am using the beautiful balloons bundle, these stamps here on the left and this really nice die set. And you can see I have already stamped my card base. This is going to be the background for where the shakers are going to be. So I use the streamers and the balloons, the cute little greeting. I like how that fits around the balloon. I created my background and I did, so it was a little plain when I got done. I wasn't digging all the white everywhere. So I used some blending brushes around the edge, added a fun new color that I'm loving. It's called Lemon Lolly. And here I took some of the paper. There's a designer paper pack that coordinates with this whole set that I used on several of these cards you'll see. And I used this border die to cut along this edge, cut along this edge, and then I used a deckled rectangle to cut the center out. Okay, the basic thing you need with a shaker card you need some kind of frame with some kind of opening inside. As we go through these other cards, you'll see these can look a lot of different ways. Uh, so I cut those edges with the border die, cut the rectangle out of the center. And then the next part of creating a shaker card is adding this window sheet behind here. And I'll have links to all these products in the video description below if you have questions. So you need your frame and you need to attach a piece of that window sheet behind that Hopefully it doesn't show around the edges, but it, it fills it up and takes up all that space, okay? So the next step is to use some foam strips, okay? Here is one sheet of my foam strips, and I'll show you quickly how I do this before we look at these other other types of shakers, other ideas. So what I do when I'm trimming it down to size, I'm laying it here, I'm, I need two pieces that run from here to here, and I usually just come in and cut where it looks like it's the right length. Peel these off. You want to put these where they are hopefully not going to show from the edges. If they do show a little bit, you can sometimes trim that off and sometimes it's just not a big deal if it does show a little bit. Now I need to do two this way. And you want to make sure you get your corners all sealed up, especially if the shaker material you're using, especially if it's really small. Uh, I actually created a shaker card with sand at one point. Okay, when you're using something as small as sand, you have to make sure these corners get completely sealed up. Otherwise, you are going to have sand coming out. Now I got these two pieces a little bit long. If you can see they're overlapping, so I'll trim those down and remove that extra little piece. And we will be ready to make our shaker because we've done all the preparation steps. Now all we need to do is put some shakers on here and add that piece over the top. So here are some sequins that I thought looked really nice. 
with this paper pack. I will remove the paper backing from these strips and lay it right over the top and our shaker will be completed. So as you're doing this, you wanna lay it down slowly to make sure you have it centered. You have, have it where you want it before you press it down. Give it a good press all the way around, especially if you have small shaker pieces and your shaker is complete. Okay, pretty cute, right? Now let's look at some other ways. And I did, I wanted to stick with the same stamp and die set for these cards, but I'll show you two more ways that you can use these dies for shakers. And hopefully this will help inspire some other ideas for things you can do with your die sets. So for this one, I know a lot of times I think that my shakers need to take up the, the whole card or most of the card like these two do. And, and the one with the leaf overlay piece like I showed at the beginning. But keep in mind your shaker piece can just be a portion of the card. So I thought it would be fun to use the one die that cuts out the three balloons at one time. I went ahead and put my piece of window sheet behind there. Already have my foam pieces on here. So we will pull these paper backing pieces off. For this one, I thought some blue sequins would look pretty nice. So I'll set these on here, put a few down here where my shaker will be placed. Now a little bit about how many shakers to include. You want to be careful not to get too many shakers. Uh, there are times I've put so many shakers on that it basically fills the space up and they don't have anywhere to go. They are, are just kind of full. And the other thing I should mention while I'm thinking about it, because this happened on that first one I just showed, if they are piled up too high, when you put your piece on, sometimes they just kind of pack themselves together and they don't want to move after you have sealed everything down. So if you spread them out a little bit, that should help. See, this time that did not happen and they're all going to move around nicely. And we have another fun little shaker card. I will mention, you can see, I'm sure, but I did go ahead and stamp the background on this one before we started. I embossed this piece on the top. I thought that looked nice and added the little balloon strings here. So that is a second way. So you can just use a portion of your card for that shaker area. Now here is my third example that we will look at right now. And what I have done with these is I took the larger balloons in the die set. So for this one, I cut this large balloon out. And then from the inside, I cut a smaller balloon out. For this one, I cut this larger balloon out and then I cut the smaller one out of the center. Now to cut that piece of window sheet for these, I had to use the larger die. So for the bigger balloon, I cut this large balloon here. For the smaller balloon, I cut this one right here and attached it behind the frame piece. So again here, I have created my background, kept this one really simple with a little bit of stamping and a piece of that designer paper from this paper pack that I believe is called Bright and Beautiful Designer Paper. Now, this is all part of a product suite. You can actually order all of these products together if it's something you're interested in. And the links are down below. And let's see how we want to put these two balloons on. I believe I already prepared. I stamped those strings down at the bottom. So I'm going to put them on something like this. So I need to get, I think I'll do this one at the, the little one first. It looks a little trickier because it's kind of small. I have to keep my sequins right in that small space. So let's get that one done first and then we'll add that bigger balloon. So I just want to make sure it lines up with my string that I already stamped. Now we'll see where these sequins need to go. So think about the dies in your collection and all the ways that you could do this. Uh, anything that you can cut that outer edge and then cut another piece out of the center any of those are going to work for this technique. 
Okay, we'll see if we can get those contained, get them where we want them, and we do have to pull the paper backing off right. We don't want to forget that part. And there is one other thing I will mention. Uh, I've, I don't know how many times I've done this, but when you're making shakers, make sure do not put your foam backing on until you make sure you have that window sheet piece in there. Uh, this has happened several times over the course of my stamping where I'm just talking to someone or I'm not paying attention or whatever. And I put my foam backing on the back of my paper without the window sheet already attached. And friends, that just will not hold those shaker pieces in place if you don't have the piece of window sheet in there. So here is a fun little variation of shaker card where the shakers are just in those two little balloons. So I hope this gives you, gives you some fun ideas you can use on your projects. Thanks so much for watching along. I hope you have a blessed day and I hope you'll be back again next time when I'll be here helping you to hand make with love.